Good morning, Vikings. Today I want to do a little bit of a review now that we've learned about ionic bonds and covalent bonds and kind of help you put it all together. So the most important thing to understanding bonding is to first determine what kind of bond you have present. So first we're going to go through um, a couple of bonds and just try to pick out what type of bond we have and determine if it's ionic or covalent. So the first one that we have um, is Al2S3. So how do we determine if it um, is ionic or covalent? We're going to our periodic table. And as you can see, aluminum is on the left-hand side of the stairs, a metal, and sulfur is on the right-hand side of the stairs, a nonmetal. When you have a metal and a nonmetal, or I cross the stairs, you have an ionic bond. All right, next we have N2O, and I'm purposely not naming them right now. We will um, deal with naming um, in the next couple of slides that we're going over. So hang on and we'll do that. But right now, let's just determine what kind of bond. So when we look for nitrogen on the periodic table, we see it on the right-hand side of the stairs, right along with the oxygen. So we know we have non-metals. Um, anytime we have just nonmetals, we know we have a covalent bond, okay? So this isn't too difficult. It's just a matter of finding those stairs, looking at the periodic table. So the next one we have is C12H22O11. So we're looking at the periodic table. We have carbon. We have oxygen, both on the right-hand side, nonmetals. What about that hydrogen? Uh, even though it's on the left, it is that exception. It's a nonmetal also. Since all three are yellow nonmetals, that means we have a covalent bond. Okay, then we have Li3N. And looking at our periodic table, we see lithium on the left, nitrogen on the right, so you have a blue and a yellow. If you want to say it's a metal and a non-metal, um, or you can say I cross the stairs. Either way, that makes it ionic. So we have an ionic bond. So that's the first thing you always want to do when you see your formula, um, is just determine what bond is present. So let's say we've decided um, that we know what kind of bond it is, how are we going to name formulas? So let's give that a shot. The next thing we're going to do is practice the naming. So the first item is Al2S3. Okay, so we need to look at the periodic table. Aluminum on the left, sulfur on the right. So we know we have an ionic bond. Okay, so when we have an ionic bond, what is the naming rule? Well, we just named the elements, but we change the ending of the second element to I. So if we name Al, that's aluminum. Um, the name of this symbol is sulfur, but we've got to change the ending to I. So our answer would be aluminum sulfide. Next, we have N2O. Okay, when we're looking at this on the periodic table, we see nitrogen and oxygen are both on the right-hand side of the stairs. They're nonmetals. That makes this a covalent bond. Okay, when we have covalent bonds, how do we name? We use prefixes. So if we were to look at this, we have two nitrogen, one oxygen. So how do we name that? The two would be the prefix di nitrogen. So that's our first word. And then we have one oxygen. So one, the prefix is mono. So it would be monoxide. Di nitrogen monoxide. Okay, that's a big word, but it's not really too complex once you figure out what the rules are. So let's do a couple more. The next one we have is Li3. In. We look on the periodic table. Lithium is on the left-hand side of the stairs. Nitrogen is on the right-hand side of the stairs. 
That means it crosses, that makes it an ionic compound. Ionic compound rules, we name the elements, but we change the name of the second element ending to I. So naming Li, lithium. Naming nitrogen, but changing the ending to I would be nitrite. Lithium, nitrite. Okay, and the last one we're going to do for naming as a practice, we have SF6. We look at the periodic table. S and F are both on the right-hand side of the table, which makes it a covalent bond. With covalent, we break out our prefixes. So we have one sulfur and six fluorine. So how do we name those with prefixes? Well, one is usually mono, but we never use mono on that first element. So we're just going to call this sulfur. Here we know that the prefix for six is hexa, and we've got to change that ending. So instead of hexafluorine, it'd be hexafluoride. So sulfur, hexafluoride. All right? So one last thing I want to review is how, when we have um, given to us the name, how do we determine what the formula is, okay? So the first example we have here is aluminum sulfide. And you might um, notice a pattern here that I've repeated um, the same three or four elements. Um, and I did that on purpose just so you could see the whole process from different angles. So we're going to kind of go on backwards now. But we have aluminum sulfide. So the first step we're going to do with this, determine the bond, which we've done a couple of times now. Aluminum on the left, sulfur on the right. It's an ionic bond. So how do we do formulas for ionic bond? We crisscross. We use the crisscross method. So we've got to use our charges. Okay? So let's look up aluminum. Aluminum's in group 13. There's that plus 3 charge. Sulfur's minus 2. So we got a plus 3 and a minus 2. So let's go ahead and do it with a pen. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my sketchbook. Um, if we write our symbol for aluminum, AL, okay, and we said that was a plus 3, and then we have sulfur, and we said that was a minus 2. So now we just bring those numbers down without the charge to find out what our formula is. So now we ignore that top completely and rewrite our formula Al2S3. Okay, so that's what happens when we have an ionic bond. Um, we have to use those charges and the crisscross method, aluminum sulfide. All right, next we have dinitrogen monoxide. Well, we can either look at the periodic table and determine that nitrogen and oxygen are both nonmetals, right-hand side of the stairs, got to be covalent. Or we could also just notice that what we have those prefixes. So anytime we're using covalent, we just write it. So in this case, all right, let me go small again and get a new page. We have dinitrogen, which means we write our symbol in, okay? Di means two, and monoxide, oxide, oxygen, okay? And we have one, but we don't have to write that one. So we should wind up with N2O. All right, and just a couple more. We have lithium nitride. And if we look at our periodic table, lithium on the left, nitrogen on the right, we cross the stairs, so you're an ionic bond. That means we've got to work with charges and crisscross. So lithium, group one, plus one, nitrogen, group 15, minus three. So plus one and minus three. All right, the symbol for lithium is Li. We looked at our periodic table. 
we had a plus one charge because it is in group one. Then for nitride, we write our nitrogen. We know that is a minus three. It's not wanting to do the whole three there. Okay, so we're going to bring those numbers down. Okay, and then we have to rewrite our lithium. There are three atoms and nitrogen one. And we don't have to write that one. So Li3N. And the last one I'll go over with you today is sulfur hexafluoride. We look on the periodic table. We see sulfur um, and fluorine are here, nonmetals. We can know, note that way that it's covalent or simply notice that we have that prefix of hexa. So to do this one, we're just going to write our symbol, and we have the S for sulfur, okay, and there's only one, and then we have our F for fluorine, but there are hex hexa is six, so that's how simple it is to write sulfur hexafluoride. All right. Okay, so I hope this little review helped you today. Next, I'm going to have you practice on a couple of really small worksheets, and then that'll be it for today. Um, have a great day.